Have you ever actually bought a recipe book that doesn't include any photos? The likelihood is no. And that's the exact same with your food photography business. If you don't have a portfolio, then you're likely not going to be booking very many food photography clients. Sure, you might get a few via Instagram, but if you're thinking of building a long-term food photography business that's profitable, that's thriving, that's a business where you're actually quoting a large amount of money, then your portfolio is really your trump card. It's kind of like a non-negotiable asset in your business. And in today's video, I'm not actually convincing you on why you need a portfolio. I'm actually breaking down some major mistakes I see in my students' portfolios, as well as mistakes that I made when I was first starting out, and these really lost me clients. So let's jump straight into them. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I made when I first started out with my portfolio was including pictures that I liked. Now, sorry to break it down to you, but your portfolio is not about the pictures that look good to you. They're really not about the pictures that get the most likes on Instagram or pictures that you took with your favorite client. Your portfolio needs to include images of the kind of work that you want to attract and the brands that you want to attract. So let me show you an example of what I mean. Now, this is a product photo that I took for Subway for a recent campaign for their cheesy pull subs. Sandwich looks perfect. I love the lighting of this photo. This campaign made my clients millions of dirhams. And I actually made a pretty good amount from the photo as well. But you won't see this image inside my portfolio because this is not the style of photography that I want to be hired for. If you actually scroll through my portfolio, you'll see work that is bright, high contrast, it has strong lighting, it has a very editorial feel to it. And that is the kind of clients I want to be attracting. Now, I will put this kind of images in my portfolio, but in the recent project section. And this is to kind of help build the trust and authority that I have with future clients. So there is a place for them, but just not on the main page of my portfolio. So the moral of this story is that when somebody lands on your landing page or the home page of your portfolio, they should immediately be seeing photos of the kind of work you do regularly, the kind of work you want to be doing regularly, the kind of work you want to be paid for. That client needs to immediately be able to see their product inside of your photos. Okay, speaking of landing pages or home pages, that's a great segue into mistake number two that I see, which is not getting straight into the meat and potatoes of what you do. So what do I mean here? Now, when I land on your home page, I don't want to see a picture of you. I don't want to see a picture of a beautiful sunset or a landscape you took on your last holiday. I also don't want to see a huge chunk of writing about what you do and what you're really good at. There's actually a space and a time for all of those, but it's not on when somebody first lands on your portfolio. You need to get straight to the main point before anyone even has to scroll down that you take pictures of food or whatever your niche is. On average, you have about three to six seconds, and this actually used to be nine seconds, but it's now dropped with shorter attention spans thanks to Instagram Reels and short form video. So you literally have three to six seconds to capture a brand or a client's attention. So why not show them your best work and what you want to be hired for as soon as they step onto your portfolio page? Don't make your leads and your prospective clients jump through hoops to get to your best work. You've done the really hard work of actually getting the client to even land on your website. So don't waste this opportunity by wasting their time and showing them things that's not going to help them make an immediate decision on whether they want to work with you or not. In fact, 90% of the decision to hire you should have been made by the time they get off the portfolio. Now, speaking of hiring, if you're thinking, how on earth do I even get paid clients? How do I make these clients land on my portfolio? How do I book clients? How can I make money with food photography? How can I get a client to pay me for my work? I have a live three-day workshop series absolutely free that's running in November. If you want to attend, make sure you sign up using the link in the description box below. If you've been cold pitching or sliding into DMs on Instagram or posting regularly and you're still not seeing paying food photography clients, this free workshop is for you. Okay, let's jump on to another mistake photographers are making with their portfolio. And this is one that's often overlooked by photographers and that's neglecting to optimize your portfolio for mobile viewing. Now, recent stats have found that 60% view your portfolio on desktop, but a mighty 40% are viewing on mobile. So you want to make sure that your portfolio is just as user friendly on mobile and looks just as good and is as easy to navigate on mobile as it is on desktop. 
Okay, the next mistake that can really take away from your portfolio is having too many similar images grouped together. So what I mean is, if you've shot something for a brand and you've used different angles to shoot the exact same composition with the exact same lighting and styling, that's absolutely fine. But if the first three images that I see on your portfolio are a close up, a top shot, and then a zoomed out shot of the exact same food or product, it can get pretty boring pretty quickly. Now, I know a lot of photographers, especially when they're starting out, might not have that much content, which is why I always encourage my students to actually work on personal projects as a way of increasing the number of images to add to your portfolio that are also in alignment with your target client that you want to attract. So really not having enough photos to put in your portfolio is really not a great excuse for putting three different versions of the same photo on one line. As I mentioned a moment ago, you literally have three to six seconds to capture a brand's attention. And if three of those seconds are spent looking at photos that look pretty much the same, then that's such a waste of time for your potential lead. So make sure you're using that time wisely to show them as much variety as possible. Now, the next mistake that I really want to talk about is not something that a lot of food photographers or photographers in general think about, and that's basically the user experience. When somebody lands on your website, you need to ensure that besides basic things like loading time and the links working, you want to present your portfolio in a way that is technically attractive. If your website is difficult to navigate or it's complex or there's too many colors or the user experience feels clunky, that's not the best way to begin your relationship with a client. And it's actually gonna deter them from exploring your work further and from them wanting to even work with you. So as an example, one important aspect of having a user-friendly website is the sizing of your images. Now, if the photos are unusually large and in order for the user to see the full image, they need to keep scrolling, that can actually be really off-putting to the client because they can't see the full image in its full glory or the full potential of your work. Do you know what I mean? On the other hand, if you try and cram in as many columns as possible and the images are like tiny and the brand can't see the finer details that you've crafted in your storytelling, then again, you're actually doing a disservice to yourself and putting off that client. So as a quick example, if you look at my portfolio, Currently, there are three columns of images, but if I suddenly change that to six columns, and if you scroll through the images now, they just look too small. The details are lost, even though it's exactly the same photos as what was presented before when it was three columns. And then if I move down to one column, you can see that I actually need to scroll before I can even see the complete image, which again is not something that you want your potential clients to be doing. This is one of the reasons why inside Profitable Food Photography, we just give you the professional design template that's drag and drop. So it's actually designed by an experienced graphic designer that specializes in websites for photographers. So they really understand branding and technical expertise to know what's the best user experience when it comes to portfolios for photographers. That comes to the question, do you have a food photography portfolio? If so, I would love to see it. Pop a link to your portfolio in the comment section below and let me know if this video was helpful and if there's any tips that you'll be implementing into your portfolio today. And if you found this video on portfolios helpful, then I'm 100% sure you're going to love this video. So make sure you check it out next.